Well, hey, everybody. My name is Willie Lawson of the Saxophone Factory. Um, the Saxophone Factory is located at Music Showcase in Brandon, Florida. Uh, I've been teaching there for 20 plus years. And the Saxophone Factory is about helping saxophones, you know, and saxophone players, uh, you know, get adjusted. You guys who are subscribers already know what we do is we help beginners move on and we help people who are intermediate move on uh, while getting everything they need. Uh, I had a, a request to do this video and I'm just super, I was super excited by the idea. You know, it was such a good idea. I, I, I would love to say that it was my idea, <laughs> but it was not. It was one of our, uh, one of our subscribers. Um, it's a person who is getting ready to go from middle school to high school. And we are, and, and if you've done that before, if you've been in middle school band and you, and you had to transition to high school band, it can seem like, oh my goodness, especially if you are blessed enough to be in a place where the high school band is really good. E either they're really big or they're really good. Or they've got a great reputation. Um, everybody wants to, you know, move to the next level and frankly, first of all, not embarrass themselves. And to be a and, and to be a positive contributing factor in their high school ensemble, um, and, and and sometimes we just don't we we just don't know what to expect. I always tell my students what you can expect is that the that the the, the um, it's going to be different. The experience is going to be different. Uh, high school band is going to be much different, much different than your experience in middle school. Uh, you will you will have performed uh, in front of more people if you just go to half of your football games you you will, will have performed in front of more people than you did all three years in middle school for the most part um, now if you were in a place where you had middle school marching band um and that's not a lot of places but a lot but but some places do have middle school marching band um high school high school football is usually usually not always but usually uh more well better better attended and well attended um than middle school middle school football uh, maybe, maybe not in Texas, but you know, in most places. So what we're going to talk about today is, uh, are five things, five things, um, in no particular order. Now you can put these in, in, in whatever order, but I put them in order as I was thinking about them, um, that you need to have together, uh, before you get to the high school band. Um, the very first thing is your embouchure your embouchure your embouchure is very simply and how i explain it to my my students is, is how you hold your mouth <laughs> how you hold your mouth and because everything happens here everything happens everything good will happen with your embouchure everything bad will happen will start off with your embouchure um so you have to make sure that you are practicing the proper embouchure. And what we like to teach is this. We like to teach that your bottom lip is going to be a little bit over your bottom teeth as if you are hiding your bottom teeth. Not like you're trying to swallow your bottom lip. That's not good. Just a little bit. A little bit. So you could still talk if you had to. It'd just be weird. You know, it'd just be kind of weird. Uh, as if you were, you had something in your mouth and you didn't want people to see, right? Um, and your top teeth are on top of the mouthpiece. Now, I want to explain this because a lot of people get this wrong. They think that the top teeth are going to go on the mouthpiece like this. And you're going to bite. No, what you're actually doing is resting the top of your head on the mouthpiece. You're resting your head on top of the mouthpiece. So your bottom jaw and the inside of your mouth should be fairly flexible. So you're resting your head on top of your mouthpiece. Now, if vibrations from the mouthpiece, sometimes they bother people, you can, for almost nothing, get some um, those uh, those vinyl pads to put on top of your mouthpiece to um, first of all, keep you from biting. And they and they help a lot with the vibrations. Uh, you can get those at any music store. You can order those on Amazon. Uh, you can, I think, I think you can go to the Van Doren 
You can go to the Van Doren website. There's all sorts of all sorts of places to get those. Um, and they affix to the top of the mouthpiece. They're, they're little vinyl, little sticky things, and they fit there, and they help a lot. But you do not, under any circumstances, do you, you don't want to start off with an improper embouchure because your tone quality and stuff are going to, everything else, your intonation, articulation, everything else will come from your, your embouchure, making sure that your embouchure is set. Top teeth on top, resting on top of the mouthpiece, your whole top of the head resting on top of the mouthpiece, bottom of the disc covered, cushioning the, cushioning the bottom of the reed, make sure that's happening, okay? And then instead of pulling the corners back, as if you're doing this, it's, 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 it's a much different embouchure. You want to pull the corners forward as if you were saying, ooh, and, 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 that's really the, and, and that's really the mental place you want to be. Now, I'm in a place where I'm not going to play the saxophone for you in this video, but I want to get, get, you, get you to sing a little bit, moving the corners forward as if you're saying the syllable O oh, or ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 and that oh in that sense as opposed to e right we don't want e ooh, right got it say it with me ooh, very good okay so that's what you want more than anything now how much mouthpiece to take in we've all seen the trick the trick is uh make sure i always start my students with a little bit less than half the mouthpiece. Um, take a um, a a business. If I have a, you know some sort of those little business cards or index cards, put the mouthpiece on correctly and drop it down. And where it stops is where the the reed hits the table, the bottom part of the mouthpiece. And you want to start there with your teeth on the top there. That's where you want to start. Um, and experiment. Experiment with intonation, experiment with articulation, experiment with tone quality. Um, that's what you want to do. So I tell my students, take about half, a little less than half to start with. Again, with everything else, everything else being correct. Because if that's not correct, um, you're not going to be able to get, uh, you're not going to be able to get to, um, you know, the next thing. And the next thing that, I, that, that I've got for you today is articulation so many times so many times um in middle school articulation is left out i get students in my studio all the time who aren't tonguey it blows me away that you're in ninth that people in ninth grade aren't tonguey they're still going ha 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 we call it huffing uh some people call it throat tonguey but it's not really tonguey at all. Um, doing throat articulations, uh, 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 that kind of thing down in your throat and your chest, and you, kind of in your chest, uh, 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 as if you're coughing, that will never do. That will never do. And the problem is that if you've done that for a while, is that what you get used to and unlearning that and learning how to tongue properly can be very, very difficult. So make sure as soon as you can, as soon as you can, if you know that you are not tonguing properly, that you get with a teacher, um, you might even want to get with your band director and say, I don't think I'm tonguing properly and get them to help you. What's tonguing properly? Think about this again. I'm in a position where I'm not playing today. So you're going to have to listen carefully. Um, I want you to do this. Here's, here's your saxophone. I want you to blow air through your hand. Like that. Let me hear it. Then I want you to imitate this noise. How, now, how did you do that? You did it with your tongue, right? And your tongue is aiming towards the roof of your mouth, somewhere behind your top teeth. The same place where you say the word telekinesis 
or topography, right? The same place. Now, I could use telephone or tomato. Nah. Okay, so we're going to say telekinesis. Now, it's headed up to the roof of your mouth. Now, the difference is that what you're going to do is you're going to stuff your mouthpiece in there. So the mouth, the reed is going to, the reed's going to be there. A lot of people will tell you to tongue. I mean, the, the word is the tongue on the tip of the mouthpiece. That's not it. About that far down. Let me, there you go. About, I'm sorry. I'm struggling here. About uh, that far down or so. Let me get this right in front of my head. There you go. About that far down from the tip of the mouthpiece in the center of the reed. Near the center of the reed. With what part of your tongue? The tip? Mm -mm. Probably there. I want to make sure that, that the tongue is not coming between the teeth. Like everything happens behind the teeth. You see? Everything happening behind the teeth. Now, we are going to have an articulation video as a companion video to this. So this is just to get you started of the things that you have to be concerned with. Now, if this if tongue is not a problem, then this then this is just review for you. So the embouchure has to be correct. Tonguing has to be there. And if that and, and if the articulation is correct and, and tonguing is there, that is going to really push you forward. Like I said, this video is in no particular order, but this is very, very important. I also find students um, who are headed to high school who don't know all their fingerings. Now, if you know all your fingers, you're looking, you're, you're, you're looking back at the screen and going, Willie, what are you talking about? You don't, you don't know their fingerings. They don't. And I'm not just talking about the trill fingerings or uh, alternate fingerings. I mean fingerings, especially when it comes to the spatula on the left hand and the palm keys on, 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 on the left hand. You know, and, and in combination with the, the upper side key. So spend some time. You're, and if you don't know all your fingerings or all the names of the lines and spaces, especially below the staff, and above the staff, it is super important that you learn those and learn those as quickly as possible. Your fingering chart is your new best friend. Your fingering chart is your new best friend. Did you know that your fingering chart is also your chromatic scale? Yes, it is important to know all of your fingerings from the bottom of your instrument to the low B flat or the low A if you're playing a baritone, a baritone saxophone to the high F or high F sharp. And I think some Yannicka um, or some or some instruments even have a high G key. It is important to know all of your fingerings and have them be at your beck and call. All of your fingerings. All right. If your embouchure is correct and your, and your articulation is correct, um, your tone should be pretty good now your tone is a, is a combination of, of, of a number of things your tone is a combination of of course your embouchure uh, and your articulation and it's also part and parcel of your mouthpiece do you have a mouthpiece that's working is it in good working order is it a mouthpiece that is making it easy for you to get a characteristic sound um and now you're going to start asking me what excuse me what kind of mouthpiece well, you know, I happen to be a proponent because I teach a lot of beginners. I happen to be a proponent of the Yamaha 4C mouthpiece. I'm not endorsing it. I'm not, I don't sell it. I don't have any way for you to get a, uh, you know, a code to get it cheaper. I don't have any of that stuff. But I like it because as far as stock mouthpieces go, as inexpensive stock mouthpieces go, it's better than most. And it's readily available. And it's not going, and, and it isn't going to break the bank. And I think that's really, really important, especially in the beginning stages of your playing. 
that you're not going to spend hundreds of dollars on mouthpieces. Please don't do that. Before you buy a mouthpiece, go to your band director, um, get a teacher, get a certified teacher, get uh, a, a, an experienced teacher about, you know, before you go off and you buy uh, or get your parents to buy a $200 mouthpiece. I don't care what anybody on a website or a Facebook page or an Instagram page or a TikTok page or, or, or your Twitter feed um, says. Get help. Start with the ones I'm telling you. Do I have suggestions for people who are more advanced, who want to do other things? Of course. But for beginners, for somebody, even somebody who's moving from high school, from, um, from middle school to high school, that freshman year, that's going to be a good mouthpiece. If you end up in jazz band, then it's another conversation. Then it's another conversation. If you end up in a classical saxophone quartet, that could be another conversation. But right now, stay in the main road. That mouthpiece is going to provide you, provide you a decent tone if everything else is going correctly, right? And lead you to the next thing. Make sure, excuse me, that you are playing as in tune as you can. Which means it's time to get a tuner. Now, the tuner is only going to get you started with intonation. It's only a starting place. So, so many times in middle school and even in high school, um, a student will go to a tuner and honk a note out, honk, and you know what? The needle goes to the middle, or the wheel stops spinning, or whatever it is, and that per and that student is under the impression I'm playing in tune. No, for that instant, you played that one note in tune with the tuner. Now, is that same note going to be in tune uh, with the people around you? Maybe, maybe not. Is it going to be in tune uh, depending on what, what quality of chords being played in the ensemble? Probably not. Probably not. So we have to, uh, so we have to learn how to actively listen. And uh, we're going to do another video on actively listening to um, intonation too. So those, that's two, an articulation video companion video to this and, a, and an intonation companion video to this. Yeah. Let me write, <laughs> let me write that down. Uh, articulation um, companion video and intonation companion video. Look for, look for those in the coming weeks. That's important. Work on your timing. Work on can you play at a consistent tempo? And you know what that means? Break out the metronome. And I understand nothing can be more frustrating than playing with a metronome. Nothing. Because you're sure it's broken. <laughs> you're trying to play your scales along with the metronome, and you're sure it's broken because it just isn't right. Here's the sad news. It's you. <laughs> the sad news it's you it's not broken it's fine and almost any of them will do uh i haven't found one online even metronome online.com is decent um uh, i use sound corset other people use other, other ones depending on on what brand of um cell phone you're using uh gotta lead this background made my phone disappear uh, I like Sound Corset. Um, it's it, I, I think it's available on 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 I, uh, iPhone and um, and Android. I like it because you can you can move the emphasis on the beat. But here's what I would do as a beginner: I would put it on sixty, and I would learn my fingerings, chromatic scale, ball, 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 all the way up at sixty staying at 60 all the way up. And I would play, them in, play that in quarter notes. And then keeping the tempos the same, I would play in eighth notes. Dot, 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 d
ta 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 tu ta ta ti ta 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 sixteenth note ta ta ti ta 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 and I would I would lock that in. So developing your timing is very very important, I think. So we've talked about basically five things. Um, we've, we've talked about knowing all your fingerings, your embouchure, your tone and your intonation, articulation, and timing. Very, very important. Very important. Now, in that, some ancillary things that go along with that, it is super important. The more scales, the more scales you know, the more major and minor scales you know, the easier your life is going to be. That's just, that is just the truth. Now, this doesn't go along with my top five or the five I did first, but the more scales you know, the more major and minor scales that you can get through, the better it is going to be for you. It's just going to be a lot, life is going to be so much easier for you. So spend some time on your scales. Spend some time. Now, I know that, that practicing scales can be boring. I know. Tough. Too bad. Learn them. Learn them. They, they will make your life easier. Oh, by the way, this picture right here behind me, this is exactly how you do not want to set your saxophone down. Up here in the, up here in the corner, you see, you see that stuff there right there? Yeah, that, that thing right there is more likely to protect your saxophone, especially these rods. Down here, it's sitting on keys. Is the is it just the opposite way you want to put your saxophone down? I just chose the picture because it's a it's a nice saxophone picture, and we're doing a saxophone video. But as I'm looking at it, that is not the way you want to put your saxophone down. You want to put it out on the other uh, the other way, on those posts there, as opposed to laying on these keys down here. You got me. All right. I think that that's it. Uh, we're if you have more questions, and I'm sure you do, go ahead and write 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 them in the comments. Uh, we will have the ancillary videos on on, on articulation and intonation um, up hopefully in the next week or so. May probably a little later than that. Maybe maybe the next couple of weeks. Um, so stay tuned to the channel. Let your friends and neighbors know, your other saxophone players know that are in your middle school or your high school band. Uh, some people who, who might have just gotten started. Now, when I say just get started, I mean that you've only been playing, playing a year or two years because there are people out here who have been playing their whole lives. I first put a saxophone in my gullet in 1972, 50 years ago. So when you say, I've been playing a long time, and you've been playing a long time and it's been two years, you're going to get some major eye roll from me and pe and all, all my friends. All my friends are going to be like, two years? Mm, God, I got reads that old <laughs> that I still play on, right? So that's that's what you're going to see. So if you've been playing for a couple of years uh, and your friends have been playing for a couple of years, please tell them about um, the Saxophone Factory in the channel. Uh, I have recorded, for those of you who don't know, I've recorded all of the exercises and the Rubank elementary method for saxophone. I have recorded some of the intermediate uh, and I got a request to record more of it. And then maybe some of the Lenny Niehaus um, basic jazz conception um, book, but I'm, I'm going to stay, I'm going to tell you now, I'm, I'm going to stay in the realm uh, for the beginner because I think it's super important to get a good start. That's more that that is more important than anything to get a good start. Again, if you have any more questions, please write them down in the comments. My name is Willie Lawson. This is this is the Saxophone Factory. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, if you're in, if you are in the Tampa Bay area or, or the Brandon Riverview area, I teach at Music Showcase at 402 Oakfield Drive. Uh, we are part of FWAPA, which is the Florida Academy of Performing Arts. Uh, you can reach us at uh, www.musicshowcaseonline.com or FA or FWAPA, F, uh, Florida Academy, FAOPA.org. Always forget that. Um, 
you can look it up. Just put it in Google or Bing or dot, dot, go. Um, and if you want to set up lessons, call um, the school there and you can set up lessons. Again, until we see you again, keep practicing. Peace.